Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching the world. My name is Sean Driver, and this is the start of a new series. We've got a team for the second time, Bradford City. So we've done the Who Are You series. I guess we're going to call this uh, the What the Hell Has Happened series, where we take a quick look back, find out uh, what happened in the last game, find out who was available, who wasn't available, what happened in the game, and just sort of assess what we can expect for the game on Saturday. So join us as we jump into this new segment. Here we go. Uh, what the hell happened? This is the Red Horde. So let's get the introductions out of the way here and what's coming up obviously the game on Saturday Bradford City uh, we're visiting them heading on up from Wrexham there if you haven't seen the, the original video and you want to get to know about Bradford City and what can expect I'm going to play either down in the description below or find a way to link it up here and you can click on that get to know the team as I assessed it back uh, for the first match and have a look at that watch party will be on on Saturday here's a little bit of a kicker. Um, I'm going to end up being alone with the kids for the morning. So when they wake up, I'm probably going to end up being interrupted. So I'm hoping to talk to somebody to end up filling in, filling the gap. Might have to go to the old system for a bit because just the tech glitches, it's a much easier process to deal with. So uh, more technical, I won't call them gremlins, um, challenges as we uh, meander our way through the uh, wonderful world that is figuring out how to get this stuff out to you guys. But stick with us. We will be here. We'll, we will be online, um, even if it's me with two little kids running around in the background and I'm on mute. Uh, it'll be what it'll be. Just going to take a little bit of a sidebar here. The hoodie that I'm wearing, Hiraith. I ran into that one uh, when the condominium burnt down and we ended up getting out. What does Hiraith mean? Um, it's a Welsh phrase uh, that I ran across. It means a homesickness for a home you can't return to or never was. Uh, I purchased the hoodie. It was the very first item of clothing that I bought after the condo fire. Uh, and so I found it rather fitting after the condo fire. A little bit of dark humor. Uh, homesickness for a home you can't return to. I'm now attributing that to a... Uh, a new bit of homesickness and that is the homesickness for one that never was Wrexham as this is starting to become more of a community I'm enjoying this whole process I've enjoyed having you with you if you haven't got the opportunity hit that subscribe button for those of you who have been with me from the start throughout the journey or have joined recently I appreciate you following it's been in the crazy uh, three months and especially the last couple of weeks with the number of subscribers so much love to you um, stay tuned follow along here we go uh, jumping into it so take the flashback in time uh, August 29th 2023 a Tuesday second round of the EFL Cup uh, game ended in a 1-1 draw and then in penalties Bradford ended up taking it knocking us out of the EFL Cup uh, just a, a reminder of how that game transpired Penalty given in the third minute uh, that was absolutely garbage. Uh, Hayden, it was his first game back, uh, three minutes in, he uh, wins the ball, he gets there, there's a shoulder-on-shoulder -shoulder charge, really effectively what happens is the Bradford City player runs into him, and uh, it's in the box, and the penalty's called at the three-minute mark, and uh, Smith steps up and scores on the penalty, so that happened. Really, from that point in time, Wrexham was chasing the game entirely. Uh, Boyle did get a header in the 72nd minute, uh, and made, made it 1-1 and that was it. If you look at the momentum and uh, attack momentum and control for that game, it was predominantly with Wrexham throughout. Uh, just there was really the laps early on and then there was a little bit of a gap with a pushback where Rec uh, Bradford City came at us later on in the match after we scored our goal. Uh, sort of tail of the tape for a lot of the games this season despite the aggressive push that Parkey has them coming out for the first 10-15 minutes it's been difficult to survive that first 10-15. If we do, we tend to get stuck in. What can we expect? Well, this is going to be the matchup of two different styles, at least as far as score and open play. You've got a defensive team, 14 goals, 14 uh, goals against, and an offensive team. Uh, and we'll get into that as we go through things. So I've got the attack momentum. You can see that's what uh, Fought Mob ended up ranking it as. Wrexham at the top, Bradford City on the bottom. Interestingly enough, when you look at that game too and you look at the FOD mob scores, the top four attacking players uh, were all Wrexham players. It was Young, Boyle, Tozer, and Barnett. And then the top four defensive players were all Bradford players. Uh, Platt, Stubbs, Holiday, and Oyagoke. There have been changes to the lineups for both squads and also the gaffer, and we'll get into those. Um, since that game back on August 29th, what's, what's occurred? Well, we know for Wrexham, Mullins come back, so did Fletcher. They were added to the lineup September 9th. Fletcher's played 124 minutes, uh, all seven of them coming off the bench. He has fit that role as a uh, super sub, as it were. Um, 
I can't remember who which podcast it was, but they were against the use of the word clutch uh, entering into the uh, vocabulary and well, so I feel like I have to use it. Um, so Fletcher's been clutch for Wrexham going forward. So is Davis. Um, Mullen, 515 minutes over seven matches, six of them starts. And um, Ogonquo also joined the team, uh, took over goalkeeping duties September 30th. He's had four starts in all 360 minutes, and really he's taken control of the reins. So some big names that have come in for Wrexham, not as significant potentially for uh Bradford City, but they have had some changes. Uh, Rayhan Tuck is a, uh, came in on loan from West Brom. He's had 338 minutes for the Bantams uh, in the midfield, and that's included two starts. And then Chisholm Afoka, another loan. Uh, this He came in from Aston Villa. He's had 143 minutes up front uh, as a forward with two starts. The biggest news as far as changeovers go, probably the loss of Rexamite. Mark Hughes fired, let go, um, released from duties whatever you want to call it, from Bradford City back on October 4th. Kevin McDonald has taken over as caretaker manager. Uh, the firing happened after a 2-1 loss to Tranmere. Uh, Bradford City really not getting it started. And they've they've had two wins since then. Uh, as far as McDonald, 34-year-old Scott, he uh, largely played with Sheffield United, uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Fulham as a midfielder. He joined Bradford City in the offseason this year uh, on a free. He signed for two years. Uh, and he's now in the role of player caretaker manager. He's played 460 minutes. Interestingly enough that he hasn't called his own number since he took off over the duties. He, he started the three weeks prior when Mark Hughes put him into the pitch, but he's decided not to join. So as far as I'm aware, nobody's been uh, signed up since then. And away you go. Now, this was an EFL Cup match, and so you don't expect the teams to go out and throw everything they've got at it, and that didn't happen. There were some that were kept in reserve, but really it was pretty close to a full squad. Uh, noticeable absences for Wrexham. Uh, Tom O'Connor played 883 minutes, and maybe the second most notable absence was up front in the sense that Palmer, uh, who'd had, who's played 910 minutes and had really been running out every game uh, with Mullen's injury, he came off the bench, and so you had Bickerstaff and Dalby up front, and Waters also came off the bench for a spell. So really the forwards not set up completely different, completely changed. Um, as for the uh, Bantams, Bradford, and you know what, I'll take a pause here. Time out. I'm going to call it Bradford. I got a lot of stick from the people of Bradford for, we're Bradford City, not to be confused with Bradford Park Avenue or Par Bradford Town. If you can't figure out that I'm talking about Bradford City when I reference Bradford, then that's on you. A little bit of deductive logic I'm going to suggest. You know, you can take somebody from Bradford to a library, but don't expect them to read a book. Uh, deductive logic. Uh, hit me in the comments if you have a problem with it. It's Bradford. Uh, whatever. Um, back, I digress. Let's jump into it. Um, as far as the players from Bradford that sat out, Cook, who was their leading scorer, he sat out that match. Um 1,061 minutes he had played. Odur, he sat out, so he's played 774 minutes as well as Gilead. But largely, they had predominantly their full lineup other than those three players and has continued through in large measure with those with the same players that started in that EFL Cup match uh, other than Cook getting more of a run out and then the two lone players that I just went over. So um, don't expect significant changes there. Big picture, Let's just look at that. What do we expect as I went over? Bradford, third worst goals for in the league with only 14. You compare that to Bradford, who's sitting in fourth with 27. Um, Bradford has the fourth best goals against in the league with 14. You compare that to Wrexham at 25. So you've got an offensive team who has had defensive lapses, although they've been improving as of late uh, against a team who's been struggling to put the ball past the line. Uh, but they're keeping it out the back end as well. Interestingly enough as well, um, the leading Minuteman for Bradford, other than um, their goalkeeper Lewis, is Matthew Platt. And as I understand it, he's picked up his fifth yellow card. And so card accumulation, he picked that up against AFC Wimbledon. He had four more in-league competition, Colchester, Stockport, Mansfield Town, and Tranmere. That's separate and apart from the one he picked up in the Wrexham game uh, in the FL Cup competition. So he's suspended, as far as I get it, on uh, yellow card accumulation. So they're going to be without one of their best defenders. No, I'll say it, their best defender. Um for, for this match, so maybe a little bit fortunate in that regard. Um, last five games for Wrexham, two wins, two draws, one loss for Bradford, three wins, zero draws, two losses, but they have gone 2-0 and since sacking Hughes.
Jumping into the Font Mob stats, just really quick to give an idea as to how that match went. Sort of standard for how the season has gone. Bradford has been just over 50% with possession. They were in the game. Wrexham just below 50% for the season. Uh, they were in the game, 49%. Expected goals, Wrexham slightly ahead. Uh, way more shots, 20 shots, uh, but only three of them on target. Uh, you'd hope to think that with Mullen in the lineup, uh, Fletcher off the bench, uh, Palmer doing his thing up front, that we're hoping to get a little bit more productivity up front and uh, that's why I think that this one's probably going to end up I'm going to say 2-0 uh, I'll predict it I'll repeat it in the, at the end uh, that's let's go with that um, Bradford City did have more of the big chances we had more of the corners it was really sustained pressure with just no real magic happening in that game and so uh, obviously the result ended up as 1-1 probably a deserved one and then you flip the coin for the penalty and so that is the summary of the match I just want to take a little bit of time out. There is a Twitter account out there, WT underscore analysis. Um, and I have been relying on their stuff uh, previously. I'm going to probably go through a number of their tweets that talk about the styles and the statistical background. Uh, I haven't sought permission for it yet. Um, I'm going to make this video and put it out there and see what the thoughts are and, and flag it for uh, the creator and see what if they've got an objection or they're happy to it. Go to them on Twitter and follow. They do it not just for League 2, League 1, a whole bunch of other uh, teams, uh, accounts. They run up with some uh, interesting data. And so I figured it was appropriate to bring it in. It's probably the best measure to look at the stats and compare uh, what we can expect from these two teams. Now to make those analytics make sense, let's take a step backwards and just look at the general numbers, the simple statistics. Going to just go with shots on target for both teams as well as their goals, the percentage of goals based on their shots on target, just to kind of simplify matters and set the standard, because I think that you'll see the difference between the two clubs and why there is that divide. Here it is. Wrexham leads the entire league on shots on target, and by a wide margin. They've got 84. Um, that's nearly double Sutton United, Morscombe, Harrogate, which all have 46, and it's 12 more than second place um, Mansfield. So we get a lot of shots on target. And for reference, Bradford is at 53. That in the 90 minutes is about 2.4 shots on target less per game that Bradford gets than Wrexham. It gets worse for, um, well, sort of both clubs, I guess, but, but significantly more worse for Bradford. Wrexham's bad news are goals per shot on target. So that's, every, that's not just all shots. We're talking something that would be within the woodwork. Um, our goals per shots on target is sitting at 13th in the league. Only 30% of our shots on target actually cross the line and count as goals. Um, so Crew, Knotts, uh, Swindon, they lead the way. Uh, but I suggest in open play, we're a little bit behind um, where we need to be or even expect to be. And now some of that can be attributed to the situation with Mullen and the injury coming back, trying to figure out who's going to fill his boots, uh, Palmer, Dalby, Bickerstaff, Waters. Um, that's sort of been cleared up now. Um, it's, it's still an area to improve, but it gets worse for Bradford. Bradford has the third worst goals per shot on target. Um, they're just barely ahead of Gill Gillingham and Harrogate. Uh, they're, they're not able to hit the target, compared to most, and they have a problem getting across the line even when they do hit the target at 25% um, of their shots on target end up crossing the line. And so what you end up is Bradford City to me is Mansfield light. Um, decent in the back line. Uh, they'll be weakened on Saturday if the game goes ahead with the rain um, because of the yellow card accumulations, but they're solid defensively. The problem is, is they just have nothing going offensively at the moment. And that's a byproduct of uh, their strikers not getting it done. So we've taken a step back. We've looked at the shots in general. Now it's time to look at where do they come from? Uh, how do they end up developing? And I'm going to bring up a WT analysis chart right here to just look at Wrexham and Bradford City and compare them to the other teams around the league. This chart Shots per 100 passes, and you'll see Wrexham sort of on an island down in the bottom right-hand corner. It says there, strong defense and direct attack. <clears throat> Why does that mean? Well, for the teams that are further right on that chart, that means that they are taking less passes to, to get those shots. Direct attack. Um, you're moving up the field quickly. You're not passing around uh, and setting it up as much as other people. That's why you've got Knotts County, who is uh, possession fiends. Um, all the way over on the far left is because they pass around like mad before they end up taking a single shot. Like they're averaging like 50 passes per shot. Um, 
boring. Uh, unless, I guess, you're a Notts County fan. But the other feature that is interesting is, is if you look at the y-axis, which is shots faced per 100 passes. And so this is the inverse of um, how many times do people end up have, having to kick the ball around to crack your defense and end up taking a shot. And in that regard, the opposition is taking 100 passes before they can get just over two shots. And so that is an exceptional place to be defensively. Now we have struggled with people running at us. And so maybe that's part of the reason why uh, there's not as many passes is because people are happy to, to run at us. Uh, it may be, you know, we're still overcoming the, the, the hangover of the U.S. tour or what you want to call it, the, the start of the season, the fozzy weaker goals. Uh, if you want to attribute to him, whoever you want to attribute to the, the, the early start and the significant goals against that were there, um, which haven't been the norm since then, other than the Stockport County game. And, and I think that is true, though. We've, our defense has improved, and, and this chart is indicative of that. Where do you find Bradford? Well, in the middle of the pile. There is another chart that WT Analysis came up with, which I find interesting just to look at, but with no comparatives, it's something I'd have to end up developing myself or hope that there's there's more out there like this, but it, it assesses where the shots come from. Um, it doesn't really mean anything, but there is one from October 2nd, and this is shots from set pieces, and Wrexham has way more and faces way less than everyone else in the league. Um, only Crawley Town faces less shots from set pieces than Wrexham. But other than that, we are far and away getting more shots from set pieces and 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 not defending as many as anybody else. It, it again, what that does is it leads me to the conclusion that I had before is, what do we need to work on to end up becoming that step up? Um, it's goals from open play. We're getting our chances from set pieces. We're getting our chances through shots. Uh, it's our conversion rate that's and our finishing that's hurting us in open play. And if we can turn that around, we're going to be tough to deal with. Um, and and I'm confident in that despite a couple of uh, blips that we've had along the way. Bradford City, you'll see not taking as, as many set pieces um, and, and, not, and, not, and facing far more than we are. Can you take anything from that? I, I don't know. It's it's difficult to say. I, I guess fouls have to occur when you're putting pressure on to be in a situation where you can face shots from set pieces. And so it may end up speaking to pressure, not just possession. But that seems to be part of the direct attack. We don't. We're not in the top fifth, top half of the league in possession, um, but we are direct. We move forward. We cause pressure, and the stats tend to lead that out. We just need to get a couple more across the line. Next stat, uh, this one helps to understand the location of the shots. Uh, it was created October 14th, and it's the percentage of passes in the final third. There is another chart that's out there, and it has everybody else in the league, and I, I didn't bring it up, and um, I'm not going to put it up, but we lead the league as far as percentage of passes that end up in our box. Uh, we're, we defend the box very well. There's lots of passes out and around uh, the, the outside of the box, but within the box, we deal with passes quite well uh, again the challenge is teams that run at us uh, and cause havoc not the the passes or the aerial attacks so interesting to see i don't see bradford city as a aerial attack special or sorry a direct sp attack specialist um, i think they more try to pass the ball in and through and so when you look at the table you see us sort of in the middle of the pile and, and i think that that fits with where you would expect a team that's getting a lot of shots from their set pieces, uh, but they're and pay, outpacing the league, but they're still leading the league in shots. There's got to be some give and some take. So if you're dominating in set piece shot, shots, you'd think that there'd be um, some normalcy with respect to our play within the final thirds. But um, it maybe what this chart does show is it's the conversion, but also our ability to convert a little bit more of our passes in the final third could go a far way to improve um, our ability. I'll tell you, it's a kind of a scary number because if you, you increase any more of the shots that we're getting in by improving the passes, we're already leading the league. Um, you'd kind of expect this us to be better off here, and we're not. It may be a, a place to, to improve on things. Bradford City, like so many others, in that sort of bubble uh, all around in the same situation, same area of the chart. And so what does that mean is nobody's really struggling with um, getting ball in the third in the final third, uh, except for 
Notts County. And you see with them, teams struggle. That's a, it's a midfield battle uh, when you play Notts County is trying to cr- crash through. So an interesting chart there. The, the last one, Ariel's in the box. And uh, fortunate for, for Wrexham, we're, we're again near the top in both boxes. Um, you know, not that much of a significant improvement over Bradford City in that regard. Uh, and there certainly are a lot of teams who are stronger in the boxes. But, but Wrexham is there... Um, especially in our own box, stronger defensively, which I find interesting because you think, I, you know, I think to the Boyle headers and the Hayden headers, uh, that you'd almost anticipate that that would be a little better in the in the opposition's box. But we're we're a competitive team in in, in the box. Uh, Bradford City, not that far off, but again, a bottom half team as far as the the aerial attack goes, and they're without their best defense defender um, in the air. If uh, the game isn't is played on Saturday. Uh, otherwise, he'll get to, that, to use that accumulation and burn it off on another day. It's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of charts. But let me just boil this down for, to you f- for for our purposes here going forward as best as I can assess. What did I end up looking at before and comparing Bradford City in the previous video, which again, uh, it's up here. It's in the description. It's somewhere so that you can see it. Bradford City has always had the turnover to end up putting capable players on the pitch and for whatever reason for now a number of seasons they failed to get results. This year so far those failed results I know that they've pinned them on Mark Hughes. I'm going to pin them on the midfield up. Their defenders have been performing well. Their goaltender is capable but not exceptional. But up front, they just haven't got it done, and the midfielders are not pushing ball into the final third sufficiently enough. That's a problem, and Bradford City always seems to be able to have the money to bring in people, and those people end up not performing. It's a perpetual cycle. I guess not perpetual. It hasn't been forever. But it must feel like that for Bradford City fans. It's... um, I don't get it. The New York Knicks just completely... uh, All the money uh, uh, compared to everybody else and not able to get it done. The... Circumstance is different with Wrexham is I still see room for improvement. I don't with Bradford City. Who's stepping up? Unless those guys, young guys on loan are stepping up, there's no new bodies. Since we last played, Wrexham got a lot better. Ogonquo in net is a significant up- upgrade. Mullen and Fletcher coming in, super sub, leading scorer from the National League, stepping in. That's a dangerous combination. I'm going to call it one nothing. I said before two nothing, but that was yesterday and I'm recording, you know, I put on the same outfit, but it's because of all of the rain, I'm going to think it's going to be harder to get traction, but it's going to be a one nil low scoring game because of the rain. Uh, I just think Wrexham's a, a better team uh, on paper, quality, performance wise. Uh, Bradford City isn't there. It must be frustrating for them because they should, they, they should be. Um, with the money that they have. In the last series, what I was doing was comparing teams to food and to sports teams. For Bradford City, I said the New York Knicks, and for a food, I said a durian. In any event, I'm going to change it up this time, and I'm going to take the teams for this segment and compare them to a car. And so, Bradford City, if I'm comparing you to a car, you are the Cadillac Alante. Uh, built in the 1980s, early 1990s, it was the a monster of a vehicle as far as value and weight. 3,600 pounds, luxury roadster, um, but it only got, because of how heavy it was, 170 horsepower. In US dollars, the car was selling for $140,000 if you were to count it, inflation and all those sorts of things today. You would expect it a lot more um, bang for your buck. But Cadillac dropped the ball on this one, which is why they only sold the things for six years. So that's Bradford City still finding a way to struggle. We'll see how Saturday goes tomorrow. Um, Watch party will be on. The challenge with the watch party is um, my beautiful, amazing, wonderful wife is away for the day. So I'll have both kids for the morning. Uh, They're going to wake up when they wake up. And when they do, um, it's going to disrupt the watch party. So Brendan's going to fill in. Uh, I'll be there for as long as I can be there. But as soon as the the wailing occurs, uh, I'm going to become a spectator. uh, And it'll be fun to sit back and take part in the watch party. So please join in, support Brendan. Um, We're going to have to go with the old system. So no scoreboard. It'll be uh, a little bit off, but still a good time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you there. This has been the Red Horde.